over during that six week break when then Shanann and the girls went back to visit family after she already knew she was pregnant. They were going on dates, they were sleeping together, they were taking walks, they were going hiking together. And then when Shanann went away, they could spend whole nights together. She spent a night at Shanann's house, he spent loads of nights at her house, and it became really an obsessive relationship. A lot of people say that... So she was a bit of a femme fatale, right? So she would literally, she would pick up on the things that Chris moaned about, about Shanann. Shanann was a people pleaser. She wanted to be with him. She wanted more affection. She put pressure on him to be a better dad, to spend more time at home. So people believe that for the first time, Chris had a woman who was asking him questions like, what do you want to do? What do you want to see today? What would you like to like have for lunch and for the first time he felt like he was being appreciated i think that's bullshit um yeah nicole was i believe nicole kessinger um had been trying to get with chris for a long time he didn't really pay any attention to her till 2018 but she actually um was looking up shenan on facebook since 2017 she had searched her page on facebook loads of times so when she tried to say well i didn't even know he was married i thought they were getting a divorce she Shanann was posting every single day about chris she was posting things about their relationship their trips their pregnancy videos of her wearing a t-shirt saying to chris um oops we did it again telling them they were having another baby um she literally, she knew lots of different parts of it. So I'm going to get into the case with you why I think um, she was responsible as much as he was. I think that she, at some stage, become aware that Chris, because of who, it, her dad was in the police at one stage, um, I think she became aware that Chris was never going to be able to stand up to his parents or anyone else and say he was leaving. I believe she kind of, he probably brought it up and said, I wish they were just gone. And I think she probably then clung on to that and kind of kept saying to him like, well, if they were, we could be together. If she, they weren't here. Now on, it came out in the court that a couple of days previous to this, before they went away, um, before Shanann went away, Chris tried to terminate the pregnancy by giving Shanann something, a medicine. Now, a woman thought to be Nicole Kessinger actually phoned up a pharmacy and said, how much of this drug will it take to kill a baby, a pregnancy? Because I want to make sure I don't take enough to kill my baby. And then Shanann was given this drug, but it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Now, Chris has always refused to say where he got that drug from, but Nicole Kessinger had access to that drug. Chris didn't. Now, so it's very clear that there was more going on beforehand than this. Now, here are some of the things why I think Nicole Kessinger had a part to play. Now, after failing the polygraph... Chris is told that his girlfriend is in the police station and she is given a statement. Hey, Holly, I hope you're OK. Um, thank you. And he instantly panics and gives up. He gives up the goose. He tells her, um, tells the police, I've done it. I did it because Shanann did this, this, this. But as, as soon as he hears that Nicole Kessinger is now in the police station, he admits to all of it. He kind of admits the whole thing and he goes, yep, this has happened. I admitted I was having an affair with the woman who's here now. And then Shanann's killed the kid, so I've killed um, Shanann. Um, we will talk about as we go on. I'm not going to just jump the gun. I'm doing the case properly. So um, if people need to know where Shanann is right now, then go out of the live and go and Google it. Because obviously I can't just halfway through just start telling you about now when we're still back then. So I honestly believe that... Chris, for some reason, either didn't want to incriminate Nicole because he actually believed that time he still loved her. I honestly believe he purposely did not want her implicated. Now, he actually, when he took the life sentence, he agreed to do so if they didn't look further into Nicole Kessinger. And they agreed. And she's even got a new name now. She was given a new name in the Witness Protection Programme. Now... 
The other reason I don't believe Nicole Kessinger is because she says when she met Chris Watts at work, she was unaware he was married because he didn't wear a wedding ring. He eventually mentioned his wife and children, but Kessinger claims that he said him and Shanann were separated. She said she discovered Watts was still married when watching a news report about his wife and children going missing. She said she didn't know that he was still with his wife or lived with his wife and children and that she only found out Shanann was pregnant when she watched the news report once they were missing. So this is a picture of Chris with his Nicole Kessinger. Now, computer records shown in the courtroom showed that Nicole frequented Shanann's Facebook page, had read the announcement of her pregnancy and made frequent updates about her own family, Shanann did, and Nicole had viewed all of them. Now, this was since 2017, way before she even got with Chris, that she was constantly looking at Shanann's Facebook. So she was almost stalking Shanann online and Shanann had no idea she existed. Shanann is more naturally pretty than Nicole. And I believe Nicole wanted everything Shanann had. Now, so that's one of the reasons, like, you're lying already because you're saying you didn't know who she was. You did know who she was to the extent where you were looking all the time. And exactly, she vlogged everything. She posted constantly about the trips, the pregnancy, the reveal um, video, all of it. She was constantly doing it. Now, Chris and Nicole met at Andarco Petroleum, the same place where Chris returned to hide the bodies. And as a safety officer, Nicole knew tons of information about that site. She knew who would be there. She knew it was a perfect site to commit um, insurance fraud. She knew that it would be a really good place to hide. Thank you, Rue. She knew it was a really good place to hide the body. She knew no one else was going to that site for some time. She like literally had scans of it on her desk. So she knew a lot about that site. Now, Kesson just said the first time she thought anything was off about Chris Watts was the night of Shanann's murder. She said before Shanann got home from a business trip, Chris and Nicole FaceTimed. Chris was lying on a bare mattress and it was the first time she'd ever seen him on the bed with no blankets, no covers, no sheets. Now, she also says that she thought that was really strange. It was late at night. He would have been just about to go to bed, but he didn't have any blankets on. I don't think that was something that would even occur to me. It's like, oh, maybe he murdered his wife because he's got no bedding on right now while he's talking to me. You could be changing the bedding, could be loads of different things, but she said, well, that's the only thing that was suspicious. Now, when the police said to her, what was the phone call about? She said, nothing major. Um, did you put up a photo of Chris and his wife, Chris and his girlfriend? So this is Chris and his, this is Chris and his wife. Uh, this is Kristen's girlfriend and this is Kristen's wife. So this is Shanann. Um, so her Facebook was full of these posts, constant posts about holidays, trips and them together. Like it was it was undeniable to see that they were still together on the Facebook page. Um, the fact that his girlfriend was saying that that she didn't know is absolute bollocks. Um, now... Yeah, so when the police said, what was the call about that night? She said, I don't know. It was very brief. We were just kind of seeing what each other had been up to and saying goodnight. Now, the, four, the call was then traced by the police to have lasted 111 minutes. And she's like, it's just a brief one. How are you going to be on the phone for 111 minutes that night? Way longer than normal. What were you talking about? What were you planning? What were you saying for 111 minutes? Now... <laughs> She still couldn't tell police exactly what they were talking about on the phone, despite the fact she was interviewed less than 48 hours after that call. Now, if you ask me what I spoke to Sophie about three months ago, I probably don't know. But if you ask me what the last call I had with Sophie was like a couple of days ago, or whatever, I would know what I said. So this is and this is in a really high stressful situation where what you say is really important. So you're going to be like, well, he said this, he said that. <coughs> now, she does say that. The only other thing that she thought was weird was that Chris was too um, too casual about his wife and kids being missing and it panicked her. But yet she didn't say anything to the police. Now, Nicole has no alibi for the time of the murders. She, she has none. Thank you, Leah. Now, she also told the police when she was interviewed that their relationship was only two months long, which it pretty much was one broken up. It was literally like one date here, one date here, because most of the time Shanann had been at home. And she said it was just really brief. It was a, a, a tiny affair. 
It wasn't serious. So there's no reason for him to have to have done this. Um, and then the police look at her Google searching and she's Googling phrases like, man I'm having an affair with says he will leave his wife, marrying your mistress, getting to marry the man that's in a, in a marriage. My husband, I uh, know my boyfriend's wife is pregnant. So she's constantly Googling these things and then saying, well, I didn't do that. Um, the morning of the murders, a truck is parked outside Chris's home, which is very similar to Nicole's truck. The neighbour describes it as almost identical to the truck owned by um, Nicole. And the neighbour's never seen her car before. He had no idea. Um, on the one time that she stayed at their house, she arrived with Chris in his car. Um, so the neighbour said in the early hours of the morning, there was a truck there that looked very similar to hers. Now, at, the, at that time, at five o'clock in the morning, Nicole's phone is pinging from the cell tower right outside Chris's house. Now, she is she lives in a town 25 minutes away, but yet her phone is pinging from the tower outside closest to their house. Um, the truck isn't on the neighbour's CCTV, but we are going to get into the CCTV in a minute. So... Nicole Kessinger tried to destroy her SIM card before giving her phone to investigators and she deleted every single text and photo from her and Chris. And then she said it was a glitch on her phone and she didn't realise that's what they'd wanted to see. And they're like, we've brought you in here because your boyfriend's family, your boyfriend's family are missing and you have deleted every text from him. How is that going to help us? and she's like angry at them she's like i'll show you my phone i'm not giving you my phone they're like we can get a warrant and she's like and her dad's there who used to be a police officer saying to her you're gonna have to hand over your phone if you're innocent you're gonna have to hand over your phone but she's really angry about it now phone calls show show records phone records show that nicole and chris were in close contact the whole night the morning of and the day following the murders pretty much non-stop they were they were literally on the phone now, again, Chris told law enforcement he tried to first subdue Shanann with oxycodone. He hoped that it would cause a miscarriage. Now, police said, we don't know how you're able to get oxycodone, being that you weren't prescribed it. And he says, that's my secret and I'll take it to the grave. Now, I do believe, like I said to you before, the phone call that was made to the pharmacy, I believe they may even have tracked that to Nicole, was a woman saying how much oxycodone will it take for us. To, I don't think it's ever been proven it's come from his dad. Um, I think he tried to say that. His dad didn't even live in the same town as them, so he would have to have got it earlier in kind of preparation. I'm not completely sure about that. One of the last texts from Nicole sent to Chris before the deaths of Shanann and the girls, read, I want to be part of it. Being in your life is something I crave. She could not explain to police what I want to be part of it means. Now, Nicole actually Googled how much Amber Fry was worth. And for those of you who don't know who Amber Fry was, she was Scott Peterson's mistress when Scott Peterson murdered Lacey Peters, pregnant and dumped her in the Peterson and dumped her in the water and her and her son's body washed up sometime later. I think it was about four months later. Now, we're going to get into security footage from the day of the murders. Now, when we talk about the footage from the neighbour, Nate, that saw Chris loading the car, I think there are two people loading that car. And I also think you can see one of them has a ponytail. Now I'm going to show you the still shots. Now some of them I've had to take off TikTok because I was really in a rush. So they're from other people's videos and I've just kind of zoomed in on it. But you'll be able to see like the girl's shoulder in the video. And some of them are just from online from still shots of the CCTV. Um, so I'm going to show you some of them. Let me just get it to the right part that I want to show. Okay. So we're going to have to discuss it a bit, a bit. So first of all, I want to show you this picture. So this picture is Nicole Kessinger. I'm going to make them bigger, actually, because it makes it so much easier. So you're just going to have to follow through with me for a second. Um, not in your pants, just follow through watching this. Now, this is Nicole Kessinger when she's leaving the police interview. Um, 
this is Nicole Kessinger again at the police interview. If you notice, she's got a grey shoulder bag on. You can see her ponytail and everything else. Um, so that's her talking to detectives as she leaves. Um, okay. So now let's look at some of the CCTV from that night. So I just want to go this way first. So this is some of the CCTV from that night. Okay. This is some, I'm going to make it a bit smaller so you can see. This is someone coming in and out to the car. Right. Um, why can't I make it smaller in my hands? This to me looks like a woman. It looks like a woman with boots on, with boobs and with long hair. Okay. And the measurements would be the same for someone Nicole Kessinger's height, not someone that is Chris Watts's height. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm literally just got loads of photos in different orders. So you just have to bear with me. So where we go, where we go. This is one of the um, images. So I'm going to show you the image first. This is the image, right, of somebody carrying a child to the car wrapped in blankets, okay? So you can see there, it's somebody with a bag, holding a shoulder bag, carrying something to the car. Now, when you do the outline around it, you see the purse, the hair, you see? Now, when we take again, the picture from the CCTV, which is this picture, and you layer it on top of the picture of Nicole Kessinger in the police station. On this still shot, you can see someone closing the garage stood next to someone else. Two people, four pairs of legs, four arms. How is that one person? And here's that picture from the CCTV that I've, that I've laid over the interview picture. So this is someone walking out of the garage. This is where I've laid it over her picture. So this is from the CCTV. When you just alienate just that photo. Can you see what I mean? And here is another picture, which to me, right, so this here to me looks like a very skinny person wearing boots, right? Now, if you look at Chris Watts, he was buff by this stage, yeah? He was big. He was built. He was he was literally working out at all times and stuff. This to me is not, is not Chris Watts in those pictures. And there is, you know, this, this, I definitely think she was there that morning. The fact that her, that her phone is pinging in the area... Um, it's just literally, I 100% believe you can see the ponytail. Um, thank you for everyone who's in the room tonight. We've got quite a full room tonight. Um, it does look like Ugg boots, doesn't it? I think the one way she looks really tall has been zoomed in on so people can try and make up the outlines. But here to me is two different people. There is clearly two different people. Um, hey, Heather. There is something really strange going on with the police kind of made a deal with Chris Watts that if if she if he confessed, they would leave Nicole Kessinger alone. And part of me wonders if she... You can see the handbag. You can, do you see a fucking ha wearing the handbag carrying the kid? That to me is 100% a woman. Um, the dad's an ex-police officer and he was quite high up. So it's, it's it could be very much that he's kind of... And you can see her bag here um, with the same like, ponytail, the same jeans, the same boots just doesn't make any just doesn't make any sense that you can't see that that's a woman even the frame like a butt on a woman the hips on a woman um it doesn't make any sense my posh wearing right so i'm going to um i'm going to have a quick vape and a drink and then we're going to get into what actually happened that day and obviously we're going to go into a little bit of detail about what happened. We're going to go into Chris's words. She's carrying Cece. Now, I'm just going to say, in my belief, Cece Watts never left that house alive. Um, 
Chris talks a lot about what happened with Bella in the car. He does. He just says that Cece was not quite awake, that she was in and out of sleep. Um, I do believe that there was two people in that house that night. I believe that... So you climb the stairs. That's Servi. Uh, no, Jess, I haven't. Um, where's Servi? I, I do believe that... Shanann was held down because, believe it or not, no matter what, Chris Watts was not going to be able to hold down Shanann and strangle her at the same time. And she wasn't going to fight back like fuck for her babies and the babies she was carrying. I do not believe he would have managed to be able to strangle her for as long as it would take to strangle someone, which is up to 10 minutes, right, without a scratch on his face. She would have fucked him up. I don't care how big a man is. I am going to leave my mark on you. You're going to be underneath my fingernails. I'm going to scratch your face. I'm going to bite chunks off you. I'm going to take off half your face if I have to. If my kids are asleep in the next room and I'm thinking you're going for them next, 100% I'm going to fight you. 100%. If I'm pregnant, even worse, it's on. I'm going to kick your ass. I don't care. Um, no, there's a really hard thing, Dylan. It's really hard to explain, right? So if someone's asleep, okay, and you begin doing that strangling motion, it is going to put them into a deeper sleep. It's going to be a lot harder to do because you're already in a relaxed state. Um, I believe that she was awake. I believe he attacked her as soon as she came through the door. I've always thought that she came into the house. She came upstairs going, Chris, Chris, realising the light was on. I realised he'd already stripped the bed off waiting. And I believe probably both of them jumped on her. Um, I believe both of them probably jumped on her. Um, I believe that Chris maybe even said to Nicole that he couldn't do it to the girls, that she would have to do it. I believe that the girls were um, the girls were suffocated at home and then they both woke up. So somebody weak did that. Somebody who wasn't committing to it. Um, these were small, small girls. Um, I believe that she probably did it and then he had to redo it in the car. Um, because I believe, I believe that it wasn't about getting rid of Shanann. Nicole Kess Kessinger made it quite clear, I believe, that she didn't want to be with him if that's what the life was. Oh, Daisy, thank you so much. Thank you. That's amazing. Has it always had a crown? Um, thank you. Um, I've seen the proof now. That would be oil tanks. I'll have to have a look at that. I can't look at it while I'm live unless I, I don't know what my password is to sign in on my laptop. Can you... Um... Oh, I can't. I'll have to look afterwards. Let me... Um, what was I going to look at? What did I say then? Uh, go back to me. Oh, yeah. I know what I was going to do. Um, um, yeah. Right, okay. Did they have a ring cam? Um, not personally. They didn't know. She didn't want his kids, no. She, she, I think she made it quite clear to Chris that if they were going to be together, they would have to start all over again. So, basically what happened is... Um, yeah, I was going to break. I just want to get this open, so. Well, I'm in a quick break. If you haven't sent me a heart, me get them in. I'm only joking. I'm only joking, guys. I need to get that smoke off the screen. I was only joking, guys. They did have a ring cam at the front door, but at the front, but not where the garage was where they took them out. I meant they didn't have any footage. Thank you, everyone. I was only joking. Um, so I'm going to put up one of the... Re so Chris Watts started writing a book with an author. And she's a 65-year-old author that was writing a book about the case. And she asked him to write out his confession. And his confession changed very much. I'm going to put up a copy of his confession. And I'm going to read it to you. Um, so this is what Chris wrote. Um, it's no point putting it big because it doesn't contain it all. So I'm going, to, I'm going to read it to you. It's really upsetting. But it's really important you understand this is a man who's writing about what he did to his own children. There is there is no... Um, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, Jigglypuff. I love your name. Jigglypuff. Um, there is so... There's no emotion there. You're talking about your own children. Um, and I believe there is no emotion there because... He is disconnected from it because I don't believe he did it himself. Um, I don't believe he was the only one there. Um, 
And I do believe that he is somewhat unaware of what happened because I believe Nicole Kessinger was very much aware of it. And that does not, that does not take away Chris's responsibility because he 100% knew what was going on. I believe that the kids had already been smothered before, um, before Shanann even got home that night. And I believe that Cece died. Uh, I don't believe she woke back up. I believe she was put into the car dead. Um, Chris was seen carrying a, a large kind of like bag. Um, and he only ever spoke about Bella being awake in the car. And every time anyone asked about Cece, he'd shut down and say, she was in and out of sleep. She was in and out of sleep. And only Bella had signs that she'd fought back. Um, so in one of his handwritten letters, he describes what happened that night. He says, on the morning of August the 13th, 2018, he went into his daughter's room before he had an argument with Shanann. He said, I went to Bella's room, then Cece's room, and I used a pillow from their bed. That's what the, why the cause of death was smothering. After I left Cece's room, and then I climbed back in bed with Shanann, and our argument continued. After Shanann had passed, Bella and Cece woke back up. I'm not sure how they woke back up, but they did. And it makes the act, act, act much worse knowing I went to their rooms first and I still took their lives at the location of the batteries, which is the oil drums. He then goes on to say, August the 12th, the night before, when I finished putting the girls to bed, thank you, Jamie, I walked away and I said to myself, that is the last time I'm going to be tucking my babies in. I knew it was going to happen that day before and I planned it and I did nothing to stop it. Later, he said of Shanann, trigger warning, isn't it weird how I look back and the only thing I remember so much is her face getting black with shrieks and mascara. All that weeks of me thinking about killing her and now I was faced with it. I knew if I took my hands off her, she would still be the one to keep me from Nikki. They asked me why she couldn't fight back. It's because she couldn't fight back. Her eyes were filled with blood as she looked at me and she died. She looked at me while she died. I knew she was gone when she wet herself. Now, he then says, now let me just stop there from it and just say to you, this disgraceful bastard described the weakest moments of his wife's death in detail, like the dirty mascara all over her face, all over the bed, the mess she made. I only stopped when she relieved herself. All of the things he didn't need to say, he had to make out that Shanann was disgusting that Shanann, like, oh, after all these weeks of me planning it so I could be with Nikki, all I saw was this mascara everywhere, the blood in her eyes, um, all of this stuff that he brought up, like, allowing her no dignity even in death. And when he talks about how he disposed of her, how he picked her up, he threw her in the whole face down because he didn't want to look at her, he literally, he hated her. He treated her so disrespectfully. He belittled her. He showed her no love. She's there carrying, inside of her is his child, his first son. The girl, the little girls that he had just tried to kill previously, that she bore him, that she adored, that she loved, that she recorded videos of them singing how much they loved their daddy because they, he kept them safe. Like all of these cute things these kids did. Thank you, Jamie. Um, he despised her. Now... When notice, okay, when I say that I think Nicole was there when Shanann died, they say, why didn't Shanann fight back? And he says, well, she couldn't. There was mascara everywhere. What, so she couldn't fight back because she had mascara on her face? I would have clawed the fuck out of you. There's no way. There's no way in hell you would be able to do that to me for the six to ten minutes it takes to take someone's life that way, and I'm not going to put a hand up that I'm not going to lash out at you, that I'm not going to scream, that I'm not going to fight. There is no way. The only way Shanann did not fight back is because either he had hold of her or the other one did. And as soon as she walked upstairs into that bedroom, there was a planned attack and they bum rushed her together and she couldn't fight back. Thank you, Jamie, so much. You're always so generous. Thank you so much. Um, Shanann 100% would have fought back. Shanann was a mama. Shanann, Shanann would have known that she was in her house, her children were in the house, and she was pregnant. She wanted that baby doubly because he didn't want that baby. He had no scratches. He then, so he says, no, we've, we've read that bit. He then says about her relieving herself, and then he says, 
Bella walked in on him and asked, what's wrong with mummy? By this point, Shanani said on the floor. Now, I believe that Shanann was seen by Bella, but I believe Bella also saw Nicole Kessinger and that's why she had to die. That's why the girls had to die. Even if maybe the girls hadn't been touched that night, maybe the girls were never supposed to die. But I believe when Bella walked in and said, what's happened to mummy, that she saw Nicole Kessinger in the room. Now, no matter how many times the girls are going to be in, in, interviewed, they're always going to say there was a woman in my mum's house. They're always going to say, who was the lady? There was a lady there. They're always going to say that. Like, you could ask Tori anything. If Tori comes into the room and there's a woman stood over there doing absolutely nothing, and I say, can you tell everyone to describe the room? She's going to say, well, there was a weird woman here. There was a woman sitting in the bin. There was a woman here. Like, it's a stranger. And I 100% believe that perhaps it was just going to be Shanann pregnant Shanann that was just going to go missing and at some stage this new mama was going to come along and I believe that when he said in his we don't believe it was the same day so um, that's not she. I believe she came back at 1.45 and I believe by 3 o'clock she was dead I believe it was literally a planned attack I think that I've always thought that perhaps that's what happened, that Bella walked in and went, what's happened to my mum? And then they kind of took them out to the oil drum and I believe probably the whole way there, Chris and Nicole were sat in the front of the car or whatever and they're like, what the fuck are we going to do? And Bella's like, what happened to my mum? The whole time Shanann's body was laid in the footwell of the back of the car where the girls were strapped into the back of the car. They know their mum is laying by their feet. They know she's not breathing. They're going to be in absolute bits. Um, I believe at that point, Chris had a choice either go to prison for the rest of his life on the words of the children or kill the children as well. Because I honestly believe Shanann was wrapped in a bedsheet as well, ready to be buried. And I don't think the girls, it had to be a change of plan. He had to, like Nicole Kessinger would have been like, they're going to tell them I was here, they were going to tell them I was here. It would have been a panic. It would have been a panic. And I honestly believe that's why the girls died. So even though Chris says they were hurt at the house beforehand, I don't believe that. I honestly don't believe that because the one thing I don't believe, and this is going off of how I've kind of got to know Shanann through the case and how I would do it myself. If I'd been away for home, right, for an hour, three hours, for a night out when I went to Crown Con for two days, the first thing I'm doing when I come in my house is seeing my kids. I don't care if they're asleep. I don't care if they've been asleep for hours. I'm going to kiss my kids and check on them. I am going to check on them. Like I check on them every night. I put my hand in front of their face, make sure they're breathing, all the rest of it. I can't go and sleep, Right without knowing my kids were all right. So she'd been away for two days and then they come back. I haven't contradicted myself. I've told you what Chris said happened. And then I've said, this is what I think's happened. Um, I would go in there and check. A mother's always going to go in there and go, let me go and see my girls. So even if you're just walking in, looking in the doorway. So if they'd already been smothered with pillows, etc., she's going to know. She's going to know something's off. And the way he says it is he's done that and then she's come in the house and just got into bed with him that. I don't get, I don't believe all of that. I believe she would have gone and checked on the girls and I believe at that stage they were fine. So he then says, so then the author, Cadle, actually talks about these confessions that Chris has given her about the girls. And she says, Christopher was happy until he saw it all in print. And with the problems for his family, it's hard for him. He always does what he's told. He was conditioned to do that. His mother didn't want the book because it admitted what she fought against from the beginning. She didn't want Chris to admit that Shanann was a victim. She wanted it to stay that people believed that maybe Shanann had killed the girls. So Chris then asked her to not write the book or take his confessions out. And she said, no, you've already given me and you've signed the paperwork. But Chris's mum was fuming that everybody else would see the truth about her son. Um, let me go to trying to shut things down if I've kind of gone through it. Right, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Let me just go through this police interview. I don't think I need to read that because I think we've already done pretty much. Mm -hmm. 
Let me just care for this a second. So Chris then goes on to say that he then drove the girls 45 minutes out to the oil site. He says that Bella is just quite happy in the back of the car. He says that Cece's in and out of sleep. Now, one thing both sets of family said in the beginning is that I know it's disgusting, Anne. Um, one thing both family members' side said is that Bella would not have been quiet. Bella could be quite highly antagonised. She could be quite loud. And if she had just seen her mum laying in sheets, having soiled herself, um, she would have been reacting. She'd have been asking questions. She'd have been panicking. And Chris would have been getting more and more worked up. Um, 100% so, yeah. Um, Bella's older. Now, there's no way that this would have happened where Bella would just sit there quite happily with her mum wrapped in blankets by her feet and not and just not been like asking all the questions in the world. Like kids question stuff all the time. Now he then says that I'm not going to go too much into detail about it, but he then says he strangled and smothered the girls at the at the job site. Um Bella fought back extremely hard. Bella had several bites and bits of bruising inside her mouth where she'd bit her own tongue and bit her own inner lip. Um, and the last thing she ever said is, no, daddy, don't do to me what you did to my sister. Um, it is devastating. And Chris even spoke about it in the interview himself. He says that Bella said to me, you're not going to do to me what you did to Cece, are you, daddy? And then she was just saying, no, daddy, no. Um, and it was quite apparent from her injuries, especially to her mouth and teeth, that she had been fighting back very hard to save her life. Um, it's, it, it doesn't, no, you know, even when he talks about that, he shows no emotion. He has no emotion. Um, he will go through stages where he says, I won't sp speak about what happened to the girls or he brush over that like it's really uncomfortable for him. But with Chris Watts, it's almost like it's uncomfortable for him to talk about the girls because he can't produce the emotion that's expected of him. Um, he says some really dickhead things in police interviews, in uh, like interviews, he's, uh, phone calls he's had with his family members throughout the prison time that he's been there and they've been leaked or let out on YouTube and stuff. And he'll kind of, people say... Um, you know, Chris, there's still so much going on about what you said about the kids and stuff. And he'll be like, you know, I read the kids books every night. I've got their pictures all over my cell. Like they've forgiven me. They're good with me. I talk to Shannon all the time. And I think you arrogant fucking bastard. How dare you? How dare you get any comfort from photos of them, little girl? How dare you use them to make yourself feel fucking better? Like, you should never be able to have one single image of them. And no, um, Shan's family have tried to fight through that because it was his mum had sent him in loads of photos of them. And they were like, why would you send him pictures of the people that he murdered and allow him to get comfort? He's like found God while he's been in prison um, and he believes God's forgiven him. Um, let me just put this in. Whoops. What's going on? Mm -hmm. My computer didn't work, really. I didn't want to know. There we go. Um, did you see Amazon has the what's... Oh, my God. No. Um, do you know what? Chris Watts is the one prison... Um, yeah, we'll, oh, I'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, Chris Watts is the one prisoner who receives the most fan mail from women. Um, he has received hundreds upon hundreds of letters. Um, women send him pants. Women send him loads of stuff. They say, like, there is two Facebook groups set up to how hot he is, um, which absolutely baffles my head that you would ever... Um, his mum is 100% an um, enabler. She literally is disgusting. Um so just for someone asked me the ages of the girls, Bella was four and Cece Celeste was three. Um, he, um, they were just little babies, mum. So I just wanted to talk about. Um, so. So Shanann's parents were on Dr. Phil. They did an interview and they actually opened up about the fact that they had not been able to say goodbye to Bella and Cece because 
they would both have to be buried in special coffins because their bodies were highly flammable and they could um they could actually she was he was buried with CC, uh, with um their mum Shadan. They had um there was every chance that the coffins could blow up, so they had to have special coffins made for that fact. And they weren't allowed to be cremated because they would blow up a building if they had been cremated because of the crude oil that they had been placed in for so long, um, it would have blown up the whole building. So they just couldn't do it. Um, so they had to have a bigger coffin and they had to seal it with a certain wrap so the gases couldn't leak out. Um, and the family say, so we never got to say goodbye. Um, we were ne never able to hug them, never able to say, I, um, we love them like most people do. There was also, um, Obviously, there's certain things I won't talk about because it's little kids, but certain things about being in oil for that long would would be absolutely horrific. It wouldn't be something you'd ever want to see. Um, now, the process of removing the girls' bodies from the massive oil drums began at 5am on the mor morning of August the 16th and would go on for almost 14 hours. It was 6.45 in the evening when the Colorado State Patrol cleared the scene. In that time, the oil from the two 400-barrel tanks on the scene were manually drained by workers who carefully poured the liquid over metal screens to collect any possible evidence. Then once the tanks were emptied, men in self-contained breathing gear entered and removed the bodies of Bella and Celeste. Um, I won't say that. Um, and obviously their brother Nico and their mum... Shanann were found 100 yards away from where they were found um, in a shallow grave. The diameter of the the opening of the oil tank is about eight inches. So Cece just about got in there, but he had to force Bella into the hole. Um, now, one of the troopers said... Um, I just wanted to see... They said, I went in first and there was someone close behind. We could only go in for minutes at a time because of how um, toxic it was to be in there and, and because of breathing difficulties. We managed to find um, one small female child in each of the drum. Um, and we did it bit by bit because we didn't want to cause any more damage to the bodies. Um, there is a lot of stuff they go on to say, which I would just sum up because it's, it's so horrific. Um, obviously, slippage, etc., from oil of bodies would just be absolutely horrific. Um, and the police were absolutely devastated. The firefighters, they did everything they could to keep the girls as complete as they could to get them out. Um, they actually put their lives in danger for 14 hours in a row and refused to leave until they they had managed to take the girls out. They showed the girls so much compassion and love that their own father had not been capable of. And I think it's one of the only things that give Shanann's mum and dad so much comfort is that they hadn't even got to Colorado yet and there was police officers and firefighters who were there um, treating the girls as they were little children and not... Um, it just would be absolutely horrific, absolutely horrific what those people would have seen that day. Um, some of the firefighters had to leave work after that day and never gone back to work. They've got PTSD. They struggle to cope. They have flashbacks. Um, full careers have been obviously destroyed because of what he chose to do. There is one thing to snap and kill your children, which is absolutely horrific. Um, I cannot imagine that, but it's another way of, it's a whole new level to dump them somewhere where you know they're not gonna come out in one piece, where you know that it's gonna do horrific things to them. I believe that he thought it would destroy them over time. They were in there for four days um, and already there was so much damage to their bodies. I, I do believe that he did think he could just dump them in there and never think about it again. I believe Chris Watts was the type of man who could go back and back and back again to that area and not give a shit. Like he it would never, he could have just carried on working and never for a second thought to himself. The kids were in there. He just did not care. He 100% knew the effect that we all would have on the body. 100% he did. Um, and I believe the only reason he confessed, the only reason he confessed was because he did not want to sit there and listen in front of Shanann's family to what he'd done. They did plan on um, they did plan on setting fire to the oil drums at some stage to do an insurance claim, him and Nicole. Um, she says she wasn't part of it. She 100% was. Um, 
if it wasn't for Shan's friend, then none. It, it very well could have happened. The, the fire could have been set. He would have got loads of money out of it. All this stuff would happen. Um, this man is an absolute coward. And um, you know, we'll ne we'll never hear the full story. Um, we'll never hear the full story. But I do think someone like Chris will eventually find out that Nicole's moved on on the outside, got married, doing all these different things. And I do believe he may come forward and say he want to get his own back. He's he's just um, or he'll end up telling someone in prison. Um, no, they haven't been. Uh, though I'm pretty sure that it's still there. Uh, I just wanted to have a look. Um, it may have been removed. Yeah, any prison time? She didn't get any prison time. No, he'd kind of made quite a pretty. Um, no, she no. I think he. I don't think he. I think he was good. There was no way he could have... He'd been out to the work site so many times, there's no way he could ever have got a pregnant woman for an eight-inch gap. Um, I believe that he was going to just bury her out of the work site. It was vast desert kind of there. Um, she was pregnant. She um, had a coffin birth. She gave birth because of the um, decomposition. Her baby was found next to her. Um, he could never have survived. Um, I want to see if I can find my why is my laptop not working properly? I need new equipment. There we go. I want to see if I can get this quickly. I don't let me just get on there. He buried Shannon about a hundred feet away. Um so the girlfriend has had a baby. It's unsure if the baby is Chris Watts, but I will just say for anyone who has seen the child on TikTok is not the child. Um, there's a couple of big crime TikTokers who have used a picture of a little boy that got murdered in New Zealand and are trying to claim it's um, Chris Watson and her baby. And even though those people are aware that the child they've used is a murder victim from New Zealand, they won't take the video down. They've got like millions of views on these videos. And so many people have put in the comments like, one of the true crime girls, she's got like 800,000 followers. It's like, where's your responsibility for what you're taking away from that murder victim by literally trying to claim that, you know, by not telling his story, but using it because it's got you clout and that it's just disgusting. I, even if I had a million views on a video, um, like I did with that Maddie Hannibal video that time, then I found out she was a fraud and I just deleted it. I don't, I don't want to be tied to that. I don't want the thousand views of it means it's a pile of shit. Um, let me just have a look. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if I can find this quickly. I know. All right. I want to just play some of the um the court from um the victim impact statements to Chris Watts where I put um well I just well I literally I just want to play them anyway. Um I'm just gonna change the picture to um I hope I've got one of just Shannon and the girls that's not got that bastard on. Yeah I have. Um I'm just going to pay. This is Shanann's family. Um, we'll have a look at Chris' life in prison in a minute. This is Shanann's dad. Well, I'd like to say to the court that. Oh, I'll help you tell. Shannon, Bella, and Nico love and caring people. Can you hear it? They love life, they love being around people who love you. They also, they always had good times. This is the first time they went to the beach this year and they loved it. But God only knows what happened that night. Life will never be the same without Shannon, Bella, and Celeste and Nico. Had all their lives to live, they were taken by a heartless one. This is the heartless one, the evil monster, who dare you take the lives of my daughter Shannon, Bella, Celeste, and Nico. I trusted you to take care of them, not kill them. And they also trusted you, the heartless monster, and then you take them out like trash. You disgust me. They were loving and caring people. You may have taken their bodies from me, but you will never take the love they had for me. They loved us more than you will ever know. Because you know what love, you don't know what love is. Because if you did, you would not have killed them. 
You monster. Thought you would get away with this. I don't know how. The cameras do not lie. You carry them out like trash. Of the house. Yes. I seen the videotape. You buried my my daughter Shannon and, and Nico in a shallow grave. And then you put Bella and Celeste in huge containers of crude oil. You heartless monster. You have... You have to live with this vision every day of your life. And I hope you see that every time you close your eyes at night. Oh, I forgot. You have no heart or feelings or love. Let me tell you something. I will think of them every day of my life. And I love them every day of my life. Prison is too good for you. This... This is hard to say, but may God have mercy on your soul. I hope you enjoy your new life. It's nothing like the one you had out here. May the courts have no mercy on you. It's hard every day. It hurts in so many ways. I have re heard people say that you're not a monster. No, you are not. You're an evil monster. Thank you. Love you, Shannon, Bella, and Nico. Love you, Pop Up and Dad. And one other thing, and Shannon says she is super excited for justice today. Thank you, Your Honor. Past three months, I barely slept because I've been going through a lot this is of different brother. emotions because I, I did not see this coming. You went from being my brother, my sister's protector, one of the most loved people in my family, to someone I will spend the rest of my life trying to understand. What gave you the right to put your hands on a woman, let alone my best friend, my beloved sister, your daughters, and your son? Why weren't they enough for you? In the blink of an eye, you took away my whole world, the people that mattered to me the most. Everything in my life I loved, your children. They trusted you. They loved you. They looked up to you because you promised to keep them safe. Instead, you turned on your family. My blood is boiling as I write these last words because they are the last you will ever hear from me. I can't even think of the right Maybe. words to describe the betrayal and the hate I feel. And to be honest, you aren't even worth the time and effort it takes to put my pen to this paper. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't cry for my family. They were my whole world. All I do is ask myself why. Why would you do this? You don't deserve to be called a man. What kind of person slaughters the people that love them the most? Did you really think you would get away with this? Did you really think that this was your best option? To throw away your family like they were garbage? They deserve better and you know it. I hope you spend the rest of your life staring at the ceiling every night, being haunted by what you've done. None of us deserve this. Hearing my mother and father cry themselves to sleep in this hotel room causes me anguish that is beyond words. I can't describe how this feels, how badly my heart is breaking for my poor parents. We trusted you. You have taken away my family from this earth, but you can never take them from my heart. You took away my privilege of being an uncle to the most precious little girls I've ever known. I will never hear the words Uncle Frankie again, but you will never be called Dad again either. You'll never be able to put your hands on another woman, let alone my best friend, my beloved sister, and your son. Play the victim in I just can't comprehend how they weren't enough for you. Shanann, Bella, and Cece loved you more than anyone. You were their hero. That's how did you destroy the people who loved them the most? I pray that you never have a moment's peace or a good night's rest in the cage you'll spend every day of your life in. A cage you are privileged to live in because my family isn't evil like you. We beg the district attorney to spare your life despite, because despite everything, we believe that no one has the right to take the life of another, even, so, even someone like you. I, I feel sorry for your family. I know the pain that they must feel knowing that they can't hug you because that's how my mother, father, and I feel every time we cry for our family. Nothing hurts more than watching or hearing my family weep for their loved ones. I just wish that I could tell the, that you would tell the truth, but I know that that is asking for more than you are capable of. I stayed up all night writing this statement. I don't sleep because of you. My life will never be the same because of you, but at least my conscience is clear. Just to say, this is um, Shanann's brother stood at the like pulpit thing, but his lawyer's reading out the words because he's sobbing and he can't read. So he's just stood there with his head and sounds crying. While Chris is just staring down at his feet. He's got no emotion on him at all. Um, he just doesn't want to. Um, he's just looking down at his hands. He's not asked. I get to live free, but I can't say the same for you. 
I haven't slept in two days because I've been anxiously waiting for this moment. The moment I get to tell you how I feel. How this has affected my family and I. My family and I can finally grieve after today. If anything, we will come out of this stronger today than we were before. And we will continue to pray for your family. Sincerely, Frankie Rusick. Thank you. This is Shadan's mom now. I wanted to say thank you for this moment. I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has prayed for our beloved family, who has sent gifts, cards to us from all over the world. I know God will put the evil people where they need to be. I also want to take the time to thank the town of Frederick, um, Greeley, uh, FBI, the DA's office, the CBI, for exceptional work. We thank Nicole um, Atkinson, um, Shannon's neighbor, Nathan, and his family. Um, to me, they're our heroes. They really, they really are. God bless. Um, God makes no mistakes on who he puts in your life. Marriage is about love, trust, and friendship and unity. We marry for sickness and health to death do us part. Our daughter Shannon loved you with all of her heart. Your children loved you to the moon and back. Shannon's family was her world. Shannon put a crown on your head. But unfortunately, the day that you took their life, God removed that crown. We loved you like a son. We trusted you. Your faithful wife trusted you. Your children adored you. And they also trusted you. Your daughter, Bella Marie, sang a song proudly. And I don't know if you got to see it, but it was, Daddy, you're my hero. I have no idea who gave you the right to take their lives. But I know God and his mighty angels were there at that moment to bring them home to paradise. God gives us free will. So not only did you take the family of four, your family of four, you took your own life. I want the world to know that our daughter and her children were so loved by us. They will always be protected by God and his mighty angels. I didn't want death for you because that's not my right. Your life is between you and God now, and I pray that he has mercy for you. From Shannon's mother, Bella Marie, Celeste, Catherine, and Nico Lee's Nana. Thank you, Anna. I'm Cindy Watts. This is Chris Watts' mom. Thank you. I have She's so deluded. to make a statement to the court as paternal grandparents uh, of the children. Uh, and if you choose not to make a statement, but your designee, Ms. Powers, chooses to, she can do so as well. How would you like to proceed can today? Can I read that? Oh, can't you? It's almost dark. I want you to start. I would like to read Who's going to be speaking today? Your Honor, initially, um, they've asked me, and they're hoping that they have the strength to speak. But if they do not, they've written out their statements and asked me to finish for them. So That would be fine. Who would like to go first? If I could start, Your Honor. On behalf of the Watts, Your Honor, and to the community, we thank you for the opportunity and the recognition under the Victim Bill of Rights. We come today as the grandparents and the parent of the daughter and children whose life was taken in this case. We are not here to ask for leniency. We are not in any way condoning or tolerating the, the crime that has occurred and the pain that has been caused. We join in our daughter-in-law and grandchildren's family in saying this should never have happened. This. I'm not going to play their family statement because all they do is literally take away any of the blame from Chris Watts. At this stage, he's they just they just want to tell him how much they love him. They literally just want to like literally enable him to do worse. And the whole time, his lawyer, a woman, has got her arm around his shoulder, patting his shoulder, so um, feeling sorry for him. Um, which was one of the worst things about it, like the fact that he's got comfort in that moment when her family are going through so much. Like they haven't just lost Shanann, they've lost Nico, they've lost the girls. Um, and the lawyer is literally going, 
I mean, Chris Watts' mum is just as much monster as her son. She's had hate groups online where she's taken videos of Shanann and Shanann will be doing things like, um, I, yeah, I couldn't show that Louise because I think I'd get banana. Um, so Shanann has taken like pictures, like she's doing her makeup and the little one, Cece, is um, in the background and she's saying to her mum, can I get a snack? And Shanann's saying, just give me a minute, let me just finish this video and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to get you a snack. And then she's put the video up and she's like, look, she was put in her own um, vanity before getting her daughter a snack. Um, and she's torn her apart in like ways like that that are just so pathetic that she's making out that, that she was a really bad um, mum. And it's just like, how many times as mothers do are we doing something, no matter what it is, and we're like, just give me a second. And to turn that into something like, oh, so she, she deserved everything she got. Um, but yet you're not... Um, you're not looking at what your son did. Like, I don't care, right? I believe, and I'm not a grandmother yet, but I believe when you have grandchildren, um, they almost become more precious to you than your children. And I believe there is something there that would make you say, fuck you for what you've done. I don't want anything to do with you. You took my grandchildren's life. And I always hope, and I've always said to my mum, if something happens and I'm not down, do the right thing. Come and take my kids' phone, social services, do whatever you need to do. And my mum would. My mum 100% would. So the fact that she's there and she would have seen, yeah, there's no way they haven't seen through the police these images of how their grandchildren were found. Thank you, Meg. Um, you only have to look on the newspapers in America and it talks about how one of the officers tried to grab hold of CD, CC in the tank and her whole hand came away, like the skin, because of where she'd been kept. They would know all of that. They would know about, they couldn't say goodbye. They would know about the fact that they were buried in special coffins because of what he'd done. So the fact that you're going to sit there in court and go, Chris, I love you so much. Chris, like no matter what's happened, we always love you. And you're going to do that in front of Shanann's family. Um, how do you, how do you like be okay with, how do you tie the two together? Like what he has done is so disgusting he is literally even if like in the at the worst possible moment you're going to say to him in court i will always love you but i will never forgive you i will never forgive you and i will never be able to close my eyes at night without seeing what you did to those precious babies you don't have to like your daughter-in-law but they were your grandbabies they were your absolute dna like how would you ever be okay i could never ever look at my mum if i had done something like that i would never be able to i would i just i would just know it was done. I would just know it was done. Um, there is just no way. It's just, I just, um, there's, there's, there's a certain kind of evil, right, where I'm not even sure if my children murdered someone cruelly. Like, if they did something so disgusting, like killed a child, I'd be fucking done. Yeah, I don't care. Like, literally, you're my kid. I love you, but I don't ever want to see you again. You've killed someone. You've killed a child. You've done a sex tackle or whatever it is. Yeah, you'd be like done. But when they do it to your grandkids, your grandbabies, the babies that called you Nana, and you literally don't have that in you, to you can go and visit him and, and be. She said she did an interview this year where she said people don't understand how bad Chris's Christmas was, and that he didn't get anything for his 40th birthday. And I'm like. Your grandbabies never get to have another fucking Christmas. They don't get to, like, make a Christmas list. They don't get to believe in Santa no more. They don't believe... They don't get any of that stuff. Like, and you're, you're feeling sorry because he didn't have a good fucking 40th birthday and Christmas in prison. Like, the fact that she even sent him photos of Cece and Bella shows a complete lack of disrespect. How should he be able to have photos of those little girls who he looked into their eyes as he took their life and forced them into a hole of, a, of an oil drum that they didn't fit in. How does he get to have that? Like, he should be left in a dark room by himself with Bella's voice echoing in his head saying, no, daddy, don't do to me what you did to my sister. That's all he should have left. I, I can't believe they let him have it, Molly. And then even when they give this statement, thank you for giving us the right to speak as part of our um, victim's um, rights bill. It's like, you don't deserve to speak unless you're speaking on... And they were there to speak on behalf of their grandchildren. They didn't even speak on behalf of them. They literally spoke on behalf of Chris. We believe they were already dead, Emma, when they went into the tank because they didn't have um, oil in their lungs, so they weren't breathing it in. Um, that's the long and short of it, saying it in the nicest, politest way. Um, 
the same as if you'd put them into water, you'd be able to tell by if it'd gone into their lungs, they'd have been breathing and panicking. Um, and it's the same with oil. I definitely think there's ghosts in the house. I definitely think in the um, police video, with body cam, you can hear giggling and you can see uh, like an apparition running down the stairs. Um, it's definitely really, really haunting. I believe from day, the day one that Shan Shanann made lots of different choices um, from the other side kind of thing to get Chris caught. I believe like 100%, like she like literally basically solved her own murder in some ways. Um, I think the house is just sold. I believe the house is just sold to someone after all these years. I think it has. Let me have a look. Um, Carl was into black magic. Um, what house sold? It's not. It's not often in these cases that house doesn't get bulldozed. Um, the Colorado home where Chris Watts savagely murders his pregnant wife has been sold um, in 2022. Um, sold for six hundred thousand pounds. Um, is it? You know, I don't know what the family are. I don't think they've been named. Oh, it's been, it's just sold again. So it's just sold again, and on the tenth of April, two thousand twenty-four, it sold for seven hundred seventy-five thousand pounds. So the the other people only bought in November of two thousand twenty-two. So there must be something, some reason why they've moved on quickly. I uh, wonder if it says. Um. He took a body with his truck since the horrors which unfolded. The agent has been the house has been on and off the market. It sold in November for six hundred thousand um, pound. Since then, it's been repainted white and blue. I wonder if there's just a horrible feeling. There's just no way I could buy that house. No way. Um, but the clean. I just think it'd be disrespectful. I just think in most cases like this, like I have for every single case that's like this brutal, they just take down the house. They just bulldoze it. Um, well, they couldn't because they were going to they were going to set fire to the oil drums and then claim the insurance, but they didn't get a chance to do it because they got found out. Um, let's have a look. Um, it doesn't say anything about the buyers at all. I imagine you just wouldn't. You'd have people coming to stare at the house all the time and everything, wouldn't you? You know how grotesque people are with things like murders and stuff. People constantly go to the River Wire to see where Nicola Bully was and stuff like that. And with the house, you get people like coming to take photos of it and stuff. Um, it doesn't say who's, um, so he's got, he got sentenced to 48 years in prison, um, plus five life sentences. So he will never get out. He's in Wisconsin in, um, the Dodge Correctional Institution. Um, they do in the UK, not all the time though. Do what? Sorry, I think I've lost my share of thought. Yeah, the neighbor, I would literally, the girlfriend now, so she's, she's in witness protection. So we don't actually know where she is. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything. I looked earlier on, I couldn't see anything. Um, she applied to the police and said, you know, because I've been tied to this case. She did have a son. But we don't know if it was Chris or not. Now he has, people believe and Chris believes that she has been writing him letters in prison under a different name and still talking to Chris Watts. And one of his cellmates who was released, who wasn't in there for a really long time, I think he'd said like 10 years, said that um, he had received letters from someone and it was believed to be Nicole, um, which he would have been there but to tell from what was in the letters. Um, his wife was pregnant with a son called Nico, yeah. He called the boy Nico Lee, so it was like Nicole. It's, um, what was I looking up? Oh, I was looking up any attacks in prison because it wasn't a nice way to end it off, wasn't it? I know. He's, he literally, he gets more love letters in prison than any other prisoner. Um, so Chris Watts is working as a custodian at a maximum security prison and has a group of female pen pals who he writes to, revealing gory details of how he strangled his pregnant wife and smothered their children. So he talks about it quite frequently. Um, I can't see any... Um... <laughs> There's no, um, there's some like TikTok videos and stuff that people could just make them up, but there's nothing saying he's actually been attacked. I can't see anything. Um, so there's something on X as well, but I just never believe it unless I can see something like with a prison statement or something. Nicole Miller, so that's what she is now. Um, yeah, I can't see anything where he's actually been attacked. Um, 
Has she has she changed the spelling of her first name as well, or she's kept it a cold like it is, like the N I C H O L. I don't know. He's got he's got. There's one page on Facebook which I've reported about a hundred times, um, because it's um, because it's dedicated to like loving on him. It basically like look how beautiful he is. Look at his body. I wish he was like father to my children. Like fucking nutters, proper nutters, man. Um, there's Vile. Thank you, Serendipity. Um, new name, yeah. Um, really, I'll have a look. Um, It's fucking weird. Um, so in 2021, it was reported that Chris Watts is still in touch with his mistress from inside prison. Um, and then there's just TikTok videos, which I just see to be rumours sometimes. Like I could go, I could make a video now and be like, Nicole Kessinger is in Texas. She works as a, um, she's a rodeo rider. Do you know what I mean? Like a bit weird, but um there's nothing like, obviously she's in witness protection, so there's obviously nothing concrete out there. Thank you for the heart, me. Um, right, so I'm going to put up some bigger pictures because it's literally getting late already. I'm going to put up the, I'm going to put the pictures up in big um, and we can just flood the chat with some love for um, Shanann and also for um, the girls and Nico as well. So she, ha she, she has definitely had a baby. Um, we don't know whose baby that is. We don't know the situation and we don't know how old the baby is one thing. People do rumour that it's Chris Watts is, but um, we just don't know that. I think it just makes it kind of more salacious. Right, so I want to... Um, what was this picture? I just want to check if it's doing this case. So that was just the image over the top of her. So that's the CCTV image over the top of her in the, in the police station, so it just kind of like fits in. This is um, Chris's... Um, it's one of the letters he wrote to the author so that he could have the book made um, these are some of the text messages which I went through earlier, you can quickly read them if you want just where Shanann's telling one of her friends that Chris isn't happy about the baby um, and that he's changed, she doesn't recognise her husband anymore this is one of Shanann's posts um, from if you look there it's only a month and a half before he killed her um, this is when he's gone on one of her work trips, he got to go on loads of trips they got so much um, done together because of what she was doing for work, all these different trips, these prizes, um, San Diego, they went to like Las Vegas. It's like he got so much out of her work experience and then blamed her working for one of the reasons he had to have an affair. I just want to show you this picture because this shows Chris Watts with CC. Um, and this was what he was like when he was just with Shanann before the affair. And this is what he looked like after the affair. So he was putting so much into changing himself, who he was as a person. He was literally, she was noticing so many different changes. So her body's changing and pregnant. She's not feeling great about herself. And he's spending all of this time um, putting time into himself. This is him with Nicole Kessinger. Did you, Laura? Oh my God, that's... Have you ever spoke to any of them? That was better, thank you. Um, So I'm at Disneyland. So this is the CCTV. So that image there. So for people saying that was a really tall image, I think you're seeing the light. So you can see like somebody there, but the light is not ahead, if you know what I mean. This is her in the police interview. Um, again, this is her in the police interview with a bag over her shoulder. And this is some of the CCTV. Um, which I 100% think is her. I believe you can see two different people in the CCTV. And that again is just a CCTV image overlined with a picture. 
Yeah, so Yaz, the, the, that was the picture that Chris uh, sent to Shanann as like some kind of joke, which was just sick. I couldn't put the picture up on here because I think my life would get taken down. Uh, it's a really weird thing to send to a mother. Uh, I don't find it funny. And there was loads of Barbies that were posed in that way as well, with the sheets completely over their face. Um, this is some of the CCTV, which I believe you can see the bag on her hip, her like actual bag. Um, and this is just like an outline of what I think I can see in that picture. So if you see again... These are the oil drums. This is the site again. This was just where some evidence was found. So obviously you got the oil drums and they found bits of a rake, black, uh, plastic bags, bed, bed sheets, etc. Thank you, Kaza. This was bed sheets found near to the site where Shanann was buried. This is just their, um, their missing people um, fly put into the police system. This is one of the um, police evidence photos of just the site in general, um, dated by the police officers down the bottom. This is um, Shan's clothing that was recovered, um, which is why I think it was a more violent death than what he said, because it's covered in blood. Um, this is where Shan was buried before they, um, before they dug up the grave. This is the last image of Shanann alive returning home from her trip after being dropped off by her friend. This is just a police evidence photo. It's just saying basically what they've recovered from the scene, um, which is basically the bodies of all three victims, clothing of the deceased, footprints, tools, blood, blood stains, saliva tissues, and any other material that may contain DNA, items of blood or DNA evidence, photographs, video recordings and measurements, any trace evidence included but not limited to hair, fibres, blood and blood stains, tissues, fingerprints, including taken on the scene and rolled prints of the deceased for identification purposes. Um, and obviously um, they will transfer the evidence from the to a vehicle from the oil tanks or the grave. This is the only picture of Nico that is available. Um, this was taken uh, at a, a 3D scan that Shanann paid for just weeks before she died and, and Nico died as well. This is the program from the funeral. Um, I think it's just beautiful. I think the picture of um, Jesus holding the picture of them, bringing them home. This is their grave site. And if you notice here, um, Shanann's family um, took her back to Rusik and they took away her what's name. They wouldn't let her have his name. And they refused to give the girls last names on there because they wanted to um, get them as far away from Chris as they could, which I completely understand. Um, this is where all of them are um, with benches as well. So the family can go and spend time with them. This is the recovery mission where they just worked for 14 hours straight, like literally. Um, they just wouldn't leave. And this is the monster. Is that a picture there? Oh, I don't know what that picture's of. Um, and that, that's basically the case of um, Chris Watts, the family annihilator. I just want to put up some some sheets now um just quickly that just talks about um because this isn't the first time we've seen this um family annihilation is becoming more and more frequent where people wipe out their whole families and i just want to put up some of the reasons why people do it and obviously um some of the signs that you can spot in your own families because i think covering cases like this it's always important to address some of the other parts of it so um let me just put this smaller so i can actually read. really what's going on why am i pinning comments so common warning signs are threats of violence towards family members, threats of unaliving or, or SH, a history of domestic abuse or other violent behaviours, financial relationship or mental health stressors, access to weapons, a recent change in behaviour or demeanour, or threats of harm to one's family or oneself. Motivations. Family annihilators may be motivated by desire for control, revenge, or perceived sense of injustice, sense, uh, such as when there's a custody battle, battle. Sometimes the parent will do this to take some everything away from the other parent. They may be driven by financial relationship or mental health stressors, or they may see killing their family as a way to solve their problems. 
psychological profile of a family annihilator. Family annihilators often display narcissistic, antisocial or psychopathic personality traits. Chris Watts definitely has all of these traits. He has no emotion, no empathy and no care for what he's done. They may have a sense of entitlement, um, grandiosity or a lack of empathy for their victims. He 100% does. They may also have a history of substance abuse or other mental health issues. I don't think he's capable of having poor mental health because I don't think he cares enough. Um, and then demographics or background. Family annihilators are typically men, although there have been a small number of women who have committed these crimes. They are often middle-aged and have a history of financial relationship and or mental health issues. And they may also have a history of domestic abuse or other violent behaviours. I know quite a few of the cases. I'm literally, um, I remember the Jehovah Witness guy as well. Um, I don't think Chris has it in him to feel bad about what he did or empathy. I believe he feels really sorry for himself. I believe his probably only kind of regret is being in prison and maybe he could have done it a different way. I think to these people, um, they never quite understand. Like to me, it would be a clear option if you don't want to be in a relationship that you leave the relationship that you get divorced, that you see the girls once a week if you have to, that you do all these different things. He does have visitors, his family. Um, it seems really bizarre to me that anyone would make this decision to wipe out their whole family rather than just leave. Um, I do believe for Chris that he is so narcissistic that it would never have been an option for Shanann to carry on living with the children without him. He didn't want them there at all. He wanted them erased. He didn't want a new life with Nicole where he still had a burden to pay financially, that he still had these children. He wanted a complete fresh start with Nicole. And once the children were gone, Nicole would not have been enough for him either. He had a really shitty self-worth. He was like a child in an adult's body. Thank you, Kirsten. Like he, he wanted the world owed him a favour he wasn't happy in his job. He wasn't happy with who he is. He changed his body and he still wasn't particularly fucking happy. He talks a lot about Shanann drove him to this. She constantly wanted something from him. She constantly wanted more from him. All she wanted was more cuddles. Like she wanted to be loved. She wanted to know that he wanted her and the kids. She constantly went out of her way to do little funny things for him, like get matching clothes for her and the girls and surprise him when he come home from work. Um, yeah, so one of the things he did, Michelle, which is why it's 100% pre-planned, he had phoned up the children's school and removed them from the nursery and school the day before it happened, before they even went missing. He removed them. He'd already put the house on the market. He had done lots of things before this in preparation for it. And anybody who's not a twat would know any of those things would make you predisposed look like you had planned this. Like I, it doesn't take an idiot to work out. And so when he sat there going, well, I actually have um, an IQ of 130. You certainly didn't fucking use it. Um, who's going to go, oh, I'm going to murder my children tomorrow night. So I'll take them out of school today and no one will notice. Um, Corey McKinnon, I'm so sorry, Darcy. I'm so sorry for your loss. Corey seemed like a really nice kid and I'm so sorry. It's so tragic to lose a 16 year old at the hands of a 13 year old because of knife crime. It's devastating. No, Dylan, not that I've heard of, not, not that I've heard he is. I can't imagine that that wouldn't be all over the media if it was. He gets pre approved visits as long as they've been, um, as long as they've been approved. And most of the contact he has with his family is through prison phone calls. They're not even in the same room as him. Um, thank you for your respect to her and all future around the Tom's story. Thank you, Cadet. I am um, I hate covering this case, but I know it's one people always want me to cover. Um there's no happy ending to this. There's no like this has happened since it's in their memory. It's just it's a devastation and it's young lives lost for no fucking reason at all. Um and it's not even like he's particularly sorry or he's give us his version of events or like he's sorry. Conjugal visits is where you can go and have sex with someone in prison so you can stay overnight with someone in prison. Um, like often people who are together, um, you know, married with children, people get pregnant that way and all sorts. Um, it definitely shouldn't be allowed in any prison. You should not be given the right to carry on relationships. Uh, it happens a lot in like um, America. So like you would phone up and you would book it in advance and you would get kind of, Thank you, Lucy Luna. Um, you would get kind of two nights and you'd get to go and stay in like a little kind of side place in the prison. 
He could have walked away. He should have walked away. It doesn't take, it doesn't take, this this outcome was never needed. It happens quite a lot, Beck. Um, no, it ha a lot of people get it, and I just don't understand how that's allowed. Right, guys, I'm going to get off because it's 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 been a busy day today, um, and it's it's ten to twelve, so I'm going to get off. Um, I am supposed to be live tomorrow night, but it's supposed to be my night off. It's supposed to be my night off tonight. Um, so I'll just see how I feel tomorrow. Hopefully, if I hear back about the house and stuff, and it's all, um, I've got a d date and everything else, I might come on. Um. I don't know what case I'm going to do if I do come on. There's a couple of big ones I was going to do. Um, but I don't know which one it'll be. Thank you, Sarah. Um, thank you guys for all the likes and stuff and the gifts and stuff. It's amazing. Thank you so much for sitting here with me for two and a half hours. Um, and I will speak to you all tomorrow. Good night, guys. I can't get out. <laughs> thank you, Patchy. Why am I my life being closed now? I was going to be all night. My life.